In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. The official podcast of Vundablog.com, the home of whatever. The podcast that clicks clicks when it should clack and clacks when it should <laughs> absorb. Obviously. <laughs> Where do you know you don't know how to take things? Where do you take these things? <laughs> well, on my planet, these euphemisms are normal, honestly. And it, I. I, I can confirm he is from another planet. Yes. Now I have to neuralize you. <laughs> to keep oh, the no. great secret. Everybody. I'm married an alien. I'm going to turn up. I'm going to show up on. What is it? What website? WorldDailyNewsReport.com. <laughs> she married a man from Neptune. <laughs> <laughs> picture now she of eats me. crayons all day. <laughs> He's going to have a picture of me cross eyed like. Oh. <laughs> um, it is I, your host, Stephen. With me, as ever, cohortress extraordinaire. I want to cosplay Danielle. the cohortress. I keep thinking I need to make time to like sketch out it. An outfit. The cohortress. You need. You like. definitely need a high collar for that. Yeah. That's definitely a definitely. high collar type high of collar name. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So there is Danielle, my newly found, not newly found, but newly newly found, oh, newly shit. christened wife. I'm scared. Uh, you were here in um, the uh podcast sanctuary with uh, Duke and Xena curled up in little balls, sleeping <laughs> as the sleeping dogs do late in the evening. Mm-hmm. Um, we have seen a few movies. We have experienced a life event or two since last we spoke. Well, actually, we experienced... The, what life event or two did we have after we spoke? We already did a We marriage. saw Kong. Oh. Skull Island, life event number well, one. Well, it's been really nice not so having... Just reboot. It's been really nice not having to plan a wedding. So, I think that we've kind of taken the time to catch up on our movie going low. We saw we WrestleMania. <laughs> Things have happened. Things have happened. But yeah, no, so we've kind of taken the time to, to watch movies yeah. and, yeah. and have a good time. Like, the last last weekend, we did two movies in a row, which yeah. was really nice. We had, like, in, a little movie In, like, marathon. 15 months of planning a wedding, we had not done, like, a double feature at no. the movies in all that time. And all the movies that we had gone to, I felt like we kind of went with this guilty conscience. Yeah, for sure. Like, we should be doing something of, else. Like, we should be doing something yeah, else. Yeah. We Could went We went in, like, the middle of the night, and Stephen fell asleep a lot. Like, we didn't get time yeah. to, like, go to the movies. Yeah. The Steven can't see a movie now past 7.30. Yeah. My my, my he... brother once gave me <laughs> this prophecy. He said, after you turn 26, 27, <laughs> you will be unable I think to sustain a movie you. after I think nine. he cursed you. He did. He probably cursed me. I think that he had, like, magical powers. Like Damn you, Gabriel. On you. Because, yeah, it's so true. He can't do movies after 7 o'clock. If we go no, to no, movie, I would say... 7 o'clock. I would say 9 Nine? I Nine. think so. I'm being o'clock. generous. You're being generous to yourself. I'm uh. not. Because I've seen him fall asleep at an eight o'clock. And the uh. movie's at, at eight o'clock. He's like... <sighs> I'm like, oh shit. And the thing, too, that's really <laughs> annoying is that he snores. So it's not like he quietly uh. sleeps in the movie and you can just kind of ignore him. All of a sudden you'll just hear... <sighs> and I've well, seen people usually, look at him like... Usually I try to make my snores sound like Michael Bay frequencies. <laughs> So it but fits into most Michael May movies. The worst part is you're in this period of like wakeful sleep, and yeah. it's so weird because mm. when I try to be like, "Baby, you're asleep," he's like, "No, I'm not. I'm yeah. not asleep." Yeah. And I'm like, "You super asleep." The, the, the best was 
I still haven't seen lie. Transformers Dark of the Moon. <laughs> but we, <laughs> we went to go see <laughs> Transformers amazing. Dark of the Moon. No, and don't let him fool you. This, since, was in, this was in the middle of the fucking day. So yeah. this could strike him at any time. It was like noon. He was very excited. No, I was super excited. He came in I had my Transformers his, helmet. He had his Optimus Prime helmet yeah, on. Super excited. <laughs> Put it all so, so the first twenty five minutes. Movie. So the first twenty five minutes, then fell asleep inside and of my helmet. <laughs> inside the helmet. And you just could hear him. <laughs> 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 I wish I could. I it was too dark to record, but that's one of those moments you just want to YouTube. Like you just want to be like, look what he's doing. Optimus Prime fell asleep in dark of the moon. <laughs> Apparently the moon was far too dark. It was far Should've too left dark. Should have nightlight on. Prime. Oh man, that was really funny. I do remember that. And yeah, mo- I mean, sometimes it's funny, but not, like sometimes it's just really annoying when he snores. You know, you know what I wonder too now in my life? Because I've fallen asleep in a lot of <laughs> you have? good movies. Yeah, you have. And bad movies. Mm-hmm. I wonder if I have slept through more good movies than I have bad movies. Or bad movies than I have good movies. I don't know. I know there was That's one crazy. night where I totally wa- I competed with him where we went to go see Star Trek Into oh. Darkness. Is it Into Darkness? No. It was Into Darkness. It w- no, it was the new one. Star Beyond, Trek Beyond. Beyond, yes. Which was a fantastic The first time movie. we went to go see it. The first time we went to go see it, we went too late. Yeah. And it was kind of like, you know when you make a decision and you know it's a bad decision, but you don't you make it anyway? But we were like, we no, like, we looked, want to see it the premiere yeah, night. We looked at each other. First. We looked at each other and we're like, we're going to see this. Yeah. We're going to do it. We both fell asleep so yeah. hard. Well, we, we both in saw the like middle, the same amount of beginning. Yes, in the middle of that movie, out. we fell asleep so hard. And then what ended up happening was it was perfect. I started waking up at the end, and if you've seen Star Trek Beyond, you know the ending is extremely exciting and has a really great moment involving the Beastie Boys. Yeah. Um, and so I started to wake up at that part. And I, like, Shit. instinctually was like, no, Danielle, don't look. You don't know what's going on. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. You don't know <laughs> what's going on. You're going to ruin the movie for yourself. You slept enough. So I had to, like, keep my eyes closed because I didn't want to ruin the movie for, for because I already slept through most of the plot and I didn't know what the fuck was going on. So, I mean, we finally got to see it, like, full yeah. out, and it was worth it. It was amazing. I luckily what slept right until movie. I heard, like, the beginning of the credits, and then I just, like, no, I started, woke up like a perfect alarm. Like, I started oh, I missed working. that whole <laughs> half of the movie. No, that was unfortunately, great. I heard Beastie Boys woke me up for a second, mm-hmm. and I tried to, like, I fell back asleep. I didn't see what happened. Yeah. So I was able to be surprised later on, and, and the plot, mm-hmm. I didn't ruin the plot for myself. But yeah, no, that was pretty bad. And P.S. for you, Vunda fans, we love Star Trek Beyond. We Star Trek Beyond was awesome. Star Trek Beyond, yes. Highly recommend watching Star we Trek Beyond. We bought it Beyond. on DVD, on yes, Blu-ray. Yes, we, we got it as a gift from Mr. J oh, that's right, that's for right, Christmas, because right. Mr. J represents for Star exactly. Trek. Exactly. So we've seen a few movies, and I thought it was a great time to talk about them. I felt like talking about them. Yeah. Um, Especially since one of them kind of surprised the hell out of me. And so, I mean, I don't really need to start this in any particular order, but I guess we could start from a movie that we just, the back, and the back, and then forward. Um, the back and then the forward? Back and then the forward. I don't know. So I'm you want to start as early with Logan? Because we did see Logan. No, no, let's just we talk. We talked about Logan let's a little just, bit, We though. did. Let's just talk so let's about. Let's skip over. Let's just talk about Power Rangers right now. Let's start no, you want to start with, you want to start with Power Rangers? Yeah, because it's the most fresh. That's the freshest one. Okay. Right? That's the freshest? Yeah. But Let's we can keep talk the about seal of quality on this episode as fresh as possible. As fresh as possible? At the moment. All right. For so the, the inception most, and everything else is just the additional most, seasoning. I guess we'll work frontwards to backwards, I guess. However it needs to happen <laughs> in your mind. So, um, the, f- the movie we most recently saw, we got to see Power Rangers this past Saturday. 2017, don't get it twisted, with yeah. the Mighty Morphing Power Rangers yes. original movie. No, no, no. We saw the new 2017 Power Rangers reboot, reboot, and reimagining, whatever it's a this reboot. is. It's a reboot. It's a reboot, right? It's a boot. It's and, a boot. It's re- um, I think what's funny is just to start off when you know, obviously, when I found out they were doing a Power Rangers movie, I realized, well, you know, it's it's only a matter of time they were going to do something like that, because I had noticed that the Power Ranger nostalgia fervor had started really hitting the fan. 
the f- around the first around the few years that like as soon as it were, hit like almost like twenty years like yeah it was like, like around two thousand four ish like we, all of a sudden everyone was like we started conning hey, man, I remember Pirate we started conning like, awesome. when we were conning the past couple years we've really seen this Power Rangers fervor at the cons yeah. and when you Jason David Frank was at one of the cons we went to it he was like a rock star I mean people were yeah. in love with him they were s- whoa 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 oh sorry. It's not a ghost. Are you getting a call? No, it's not a ghost. Is it it's an just alarm? my little alarm thing. It'll okay. go off in a second. I, it thought, just, I, th- I thought it was Alpha. It scared the bejesus out of me. I thought me. it was Alpha to alerting us to danger. I'm very sorry. I, that just scared the bejesus out of me. I apologize. I, I do this to myself. I don't know why I have alarms and phones and vibrators. Vibrators? Vibrators. I didn't mean that. I meant vibrating things. Just Damn it, this is... No, it's not making it any better. I have things that tell me what time it is so I can do stuff. Yeah. That's what I mean. And so, and so, you know, it's scary. I always, like, forget that they're there and they scare the shit out of me. Anyway. But so Power Ranger Forever kind of hit up, you know, in the past couple of years. And so, you know, obviously the movie talk came out. They were making the movie. And, you know, I don't know. I liked Power Rangers as a kid. Um, but not in a fervor way. In a like, but the weird thing is, in a is way that... that I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed the first few, uh, the original Power Rangers. I really enjoyed the Tommy story. I enjoyed where Tommy turned evil. That was mm-hmm. a lot of drama. Mm-hmm. I really liked all that stuff. Like that was like a good yeah, drama. The core. And then I liked the original Power Rangers movie. I remember actually really liking that movie mm-hmm. as a kid. Um, and then what ended up happening was, as Power Rangers changed, I lost interest in it. And then my brother kind of destroyed my love for Power Rangers. All the second generation because stuff. what happened was it it wasn't like even about second generation, whatever. It was about the fact that Power Rangers Turbo uh it was a movie. We all we remember this movie. You remember this movie if you're a Power Rangers fan. And dear God, that movie was awful. And it had the original mm-hmm. cast ex- well, well it had two of the original no, cast. It had, it had Kimberly back. It had Kimberly and Jason David, and it had, yes, it no, had Austin, Jason. Austin St. John came Austin back. Austin St. John came back. But he wasn't in the first movie, so it was like his first movie appearance, because he was just in the original TV cast. That's right, because he was not the Red Ranger in the first movie. Yes. Um, but yeah, they had, so they had some of the old Power Rangers come back, and I was like, oh, okay. And I watched it, and I hated it. But then they had, also, they, they shoehorned in the idea they of, had like, Tommy having too. a child Blue Ranger, and, like, having a they child. They had Tommy. Had, yeah, they had Tommy. They they had Tommy. Tommy. He was their Red Ranger, I don't eventually. think they had Austin St. John in that movie. Did yeah, they? they had him as, like, evil villain doppelganger. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah. He had to fight Tommy, and they had to fight each other. Yes. Um, so, anyway, so what happened was Power Rangers Terror came out, and it was terrible. But, unfortunately, my brother at the time was about maybe like seven or eight Mm -hmm. did not know that and so was in love with it and i don't know if you've ever been around a child but what they tend to do and i mean i did this as too too but what they tend to do which is one of the more annoying things about children um endearing and annoying is that they will watch something 800 times in succession nonstop nonstop because they love it. And so we had the VHS copy of Power Rangers Turbo, and Dominic would not stop watching it. And I hated that movie he so much. He was like, I'm going to turbo drive into this film 24-7. Tur- Power Rangers Turbo go into my insanity. Like, I was, I got sick of it. So I think after that, I was kind of burned out in Power Rangers for a long time. Because I could not handle it. I couldn't handle, like him watching it yeah. and over and over and over again and especially like the worst Power Rangers movie like at least pick the original Power Rangers movie which had some semblance at least it had a, a good soundtrack sort like, of like yeah and it had a bunch of cool musical sequences it did my, my thing was uh, when I was a kid I was into Power Rangers as well as most children were um, I was always stuck playing the villains at recess <laughs> and I always did a great Goldar impersonation but I think Power Rangers always was kind of like adult proof like if yeah. you're as an adult without growing with an appreciation of it like yes. you cannot you cannot get into you it you cannot get you into really it you really can't it's, it's impossible it's so for kids it has to come from an endearing it's, it does it has to come place. from a place of love Cause it's so for kids it's not one of those shows that you can pick up and watch as an adult and appreciate something no, new about no. it it's supremely cheesy yeah supremely like it, it, the writing is is total juvenile. I remember like five years ago I got like 
back into watching the first season when it got mm-hmm. on Netflix, and I was just, like, dying of laughter. Yeah. And how, like, ham-fisted yes. everything and is it's done. And it's just, like, it's it's, like it, oh, it felt God. like because they had to, f- to do all the action sequences were done in Japan, and none of those sequ- and the sequences had to be overly dubbed by the American actors, mm-hmm. and they had these really dramatic hand movements, it almost felt like they were like, well, we gotta make the stuff that it does take place with the American actors just as ham fisted yeah. and silly. Especially when you have a villain like Rita Repulsa, who was filmed in Japan or partially the when mm-hmm. the Japanese actress played her, um But when you have a giant pig there, head as yeah, a villain, Yeah, and, you and, know, and I mean these obviously. monsters are so over the top I think they were like, we can't go serious mm-hmm. with this. We have to go totally over the top ridiculous. And that's what they had to do. So, I mean, it worked. And, and yeah, like, it's just, I, I cannot say that I'm like, let me pop in my copy of Power Rangers to enjoy myself on the weekend. And, and I will tell you this. I need a good cry. <laughs> and I will tell you this right now. I don't think a lot of these adults do either. I really, no. I'm sorry. I really feel like, a lot of them will be like, no, I love Power Rangers. I'm like, yeah, you love Power Rangers, but how much you watch in Power yeah. Rangers, though? Like, you haven't turned that shit on in six exactly, months. Exactly. Like, it, 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 I sit there kind of like, the, some of the nostalgia sweep, sometimes I think that people get caught up in it. And it's not that they necessarily really liked it. They, like, they liked it, but not as much as they're saying they like it now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's almost like they're... I'm not saying everybody. Well, I think the thing I'm too sorry, is no, I'm, but things that are so like mass. I feel, I feel that, I feel that in a way, people kind of get, they get more into the nostalgia feeling yeah. of having the camaraderie of having fifty people go, man, Power Rangers at like thirty years old, uh-huh. than the actuality of what Power Rangers what it actually is. is. Yeah, and and so it's not that I don't think there are people with genuine love for Power Rangers who fucking pop in their top with Power Rangers Turbo Go. It's not that I don't think that. It's just that I really think that the Power Rangers nostalgia factor is one of, man, I remember coming home after school or on Saturday mornings mm-hmm. and watching this Talking and about feeling this really and good and about it social. when I was like 12 and now exactly and now it's no. like a, and, and Power Rangers was a great social yeah. lubricant yes. as a child and now to return and use it again as an adult yeah. especially because it had that component of like being about creating a team and about exactly diversity it's, it's actually a really good um, it, it, it works now because, yeah, like, people have talked about how, you know, in our society, we're kind of running away from the lone white male hero. We're yeah, looking at the teams. Like the Rambos, the Rambos and, and Bruce Willis's. We're kind of running away from that because, and we talked about this for a while, how we, the argument that are those heroes actually kind of fascist is the idea mm-hmm. of superheroism fascist. Because it's one person deciding, I know what's better yeah. for everybody, fuck you, I'm going to do what I want. And we can even see in, in in a movie like Civil War, where they're actually exploring that idea. Like, yeah. is it a fa- are you a fascist if you make the decisions for everybody and no one gets to input? Mm-hmm. Like, what does it mean to be a hero and say, I know better than everybody? Mm-hmm. Like, you're one dude with one yeah. set of opinions and so, yeah, like, you've, I've kind of seen a more leaning towards teamwork and not a lone hero anymore. We've seen, look at, just look at the movies that have kind of been really popular. Fast and the Furious is about, mm-hmm. there's so emphasis on family, they should just fucking start calling those movies Fast and Mi Familia because, like, like it's just Whoa. like, it's just like so, like, all they talk about is, we're family. La That's Familia why. de la Furiosa. <laughs> We're family, that's why we drive cars super fast and wear bikinis yeah. and shit. It would be We're so family. awesome if but the like, end of true. the if the end of that Fast and Furious series was like Dominic Toretto going to like the, the courthouse and he's like, <laughs> I'm making it official. I'm adopting all of you. <laughs> <laughs> You're all but gonna it's be true. furious like, just like we've me. gotten far more into camaraderie movies. You really kinda see the movies that were about lone dudes aren't doing as well. And and they dropped off. Like, Transporter was, like, the last one that was kind of, like, uh, in my lone mind, badass. a more recent yeah. lone badass dude. And, I mean, we have a couple, but they're not... They have to... They tend to have to be... If they're successful, 
it tends to be there's a spin on it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like look at John no, Wick. Yeah. John Wick is a lone badass, right? But, but what does? Ba- but he's a lone team badass. Got broken up. Ex- and he's a lone badass. Because his wife was his team. Because his wife was his team, and it's all about his vulnerability. Mm-hmm. It's not about the fact that he had a bad day and stubbed his toe, or he's just doing his duty. No, like this was actually not a nice dude. Mm-hmm. He was a killer. You know, and so already you're starting from this position of he is not in the moral high ground. Mm -hmm. So for him to jump back into the moral not high ground again isn't really that much of a stretch for him. He just has to get pushed in the wrong way, mm -hmm. you know. And you can argue, does this guy really deserve to get a chance to start over if he killed a bunch of fucking people? You know, Hey, if you get a dog, you get an automatic reset. Hey! Okay. John Wick Chapter 2 was badass as fuck. We saw that, or Danny saw it, and I fell asleep through half of it. He did fall asleep through it. Um, we should go see it. But I give it two pencils up. Two pencils up. But yeah, no, so definitely teen movies are really back into fashion, into vogue. Everywhere you go, there's a teen movie. Yeah. Even Spider-Man Homecoming has got to have Iron Man in it for like 20 minutes because it's like, Spider-Man can't yeah. do everything by and himself. And Spider-Man's you know, um, fat boy's best friend, high five. High five. But I, I kind of think it's cool. I kind of think it's a new generation of kind of like saying... You really can't do all this shit by yourself. This is stupid and insane. Yeah. Let's all gather together and have some fun. Yeah. So Power Rangers is totally the and also the thing way too to is sort of like narrative, like yeah. itself works better if there's more people to have to conflict. Explore. Yes. And to argue yes. over points. Like, th- yes. that's why the CW shows... Guardians of the Galaxy. But that's why the CW shows, they yes. all have, like, a little, like, infrastructure team, team yeah. that supports each hero... Exactly. ...to create the drama exactly. necessary for exactly. story. Exactly. That's why you even have to have a Batman who has emotional fights with his butler. Ooh. Because he's not... It can't just be Batman, like, Batman by himself so sad like it's just yeah. you can't do that for you two can't. hours you anymore can't. like we can't do it you man can't. you need someone who's there like a hey, lighten up bitch yeah exactly and like lego batman was all about that theme yeah, yeah. it took it totally yeah. was we like also saw lego batman batman's too suck fucking on that. serious it was yes awesome. we also saw lego batman it's hilarious lego batman was awesome and hilarious and great and yeah. beautifully animated and, and two and best really friends and two best friends that was our favorite part we yeah. started cracking up immediately at the beginning of the movie yeah. um yeah, it was so funny. It really was. It was That's a good so time. Funny. And so, yeah, no, Lego Batman was all about camaraderie. A lot of movies now are about be- building teams and doing things together, you know, and I and I like that message. I, it's not that I don't like myself a lone badass movie, but it's kind of like we had a lone badass movie, Cha- John Wick Chapter 2 and, and, and John Wick Chapter 1, and they did really well because they took the lone badass and subverted it. Mm-hmm. And part of what made... Like, just to briefly touch on John Wick Chapter 2, part of what made John Wick Chapter 2 more even more effective, like, like as effective than as the first one, is because they s- decided we're going to expand on this crazy, weird world yeah, that John Wick lives in. Yeah, we're going to pull this yarn of, of world. Of, like, what kind of world does he live in where they use old-timey, money. you know, money and hotels and, you know, switchboards. and It was a really cool thing to see. It was almost like they took John Wick and, and turned him into kind of like a... A surrealist kind of look on assassin verse. Yeah, assassin verse. It was almost fant. It was almost fantastical. Yeah, yeah. and it's in its kind of way that it did things. It was really cool. Um, and so I like that about it. It kind of made it. It made John Wick more artistic. Whereas the first one's definitely more like an emotional kind of like you fucking kill this dog, he's gonna fucking kill you. Well, what I thought was interesting was they found like another way to be like indie minded in yeah. that way you know what I mean I liked it I appreciated so, that a lot cool. but it, to get back to Power Rangers teamwork <laughs> it's all a long winded way of saying we really enjoyed Power Rangers 2017 teamwork yay oh, here's my thing I even as someone who liked Power Rangers as a kid I did not expect to think this movie was good no I, at all I purposely I trailer, even when the buzz was yeah. popular I was purposely keeping my expectations yes, like super low super, super low, low. I, the trailer, I was kind of like, hey. Once they did the Kanye trailer, I got more excited, obviously, because yeah. anytime they put Kanye West yeah. in a trailer, I'm excited. But, um... Kanye's got mad trailer, trailer Kanye's credentials. Kanye's got mad trailer credentials, yes. Um, and I was excited, you know, and I, and I was... But I was really kind of not... I was hampering my expectations. And so that's why it's so funny to me <sighs> that I actually got excited to podcast because... As I've been thinking about the movie, and after I saw it, and now, I'm realizing how much I really fucking liked Power Rangers. 
2017. Yeah. I really liked that movie. Yeah. And I did not expect to like that it movie. It did not have any, any right being as effective it as it was. It did not have any right to be as, as good as it was. And the thing is, it's not perfect at all. It's it's kind of, it's definitely got a little bit of the CW kids drama that I know, the melodrama that yeah. some people would kind of be like, uh, you know, and, and the Zords... And Megazord the aren't as effective aren't as, as they cool could have been. As... Um, the suits were good. I like the suits. Mm-hmm. I just didn't like the Zords and the Megazord as much. But I will say, even seeing Megazord come up and be big, it was impressive. Numbers. Yeah, the Megazord still looks cool. I liked how they like separated like where they are on the Megazord's body. Yeah, that was, and nice. I liked how they finally sort of like kind of. Tr- like half-assed explain like how they control it yeah. and stuff it was interesting too because you know, i because i was thinking i was remembering oh no they used to all be in one big room yeah they still just did one and room they would together. do like that star trek shaky cam thing yeah, when yeah. they were like fighting like yeah. oh no oh no it's it was kind of cool to put them in like pods yeah and, like, it different was spots. cool to see and it kind of made me think like scare me too like if like they miss a punch like one of them could just die yeah exactly like one of them could get punched in the pod and die yeah. but um so, you know, obvious, I guess, spoilers. Do your spoiler thing. Okay, hold on. First, I really enjoyed Power Rangers. I think everyone should go see it. Oh, go to your period. local Krispy Kreme. Uh, I give this... That's a spoiler. Oh, apparently it is. Now it is, because you spoiled it. <laughs> Krispy Kreme never spoils. It's always in season. Always. Um, how many... Um, do you give it a... Like, this like... This is probably like top I don't rated, know. We though. need a rating system, don't we? That's we don't why... have one of those. Okay, so this is our rating system. What? Do you give it a full Duke and Xena? The two two dogs? Two dogs? Two full I dogs. I give it um two full dogs? I give it a dog and a half. Dog and a half? Oh, so you're saving the two full dogs for the right, like perfect film. Well, this is a very arbitrary system of rating. How am I supposed to determine which which dog's are the, the full dog, dog? Are the the dogs, big dog or the little dog? This is confusing. We need a better system. Don't even the dogs are so disparate in weights as to not be effective at all. <laughs> no, because one like, is ten pounds, one is yeah, forty. Yeah. So the big dog is like, whoa, that's a good movie, right? If you give the big dog and so half a little Duke, dog, no, so listen, now Duke is. Like listen, weekend. listen, like one big Xena mm-hmm. and a half a Duke. Uh-huh. That's like a good movie, but not quite perfect. I don't like this Right? At all. And then like one full Duke and a half a Xena mean that like it had a lot of promise. I refuse but to it use, didn't quite mean it. I okay, refuse fine, I give to up. use this system. I give up. I give up. I'm going to come okay. up with a better rating system. Okay. I'd say. Well, there's a Power Rangers movies. Pa- so out of five Power Rangers, do- how many? Is it, I come give full it. Zord? I give it. Four, now, thinking about it, four Power Rangers. Four Power Rangers. You're crazy. I am? I would give it five, five Power Rangers, uh-huh. but no, it's not a yellow ranger on there. This is a green ranger, because it's that good. Wow. So five so Power you, Rangers, so you no really, yellow. Yeah, you're really into Could it. Could have gone the six rangers, but no. No. Six to five. I'm sticking to, to four. I say four, because it's it's not a perfect film, and obviously, you know, if I rewatch it, I would probably start picking at it more, but... I think, yeah, but anyway, okay, okay spoiler spoilers song. first, please. Uh, go, go, spoilers, 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 go, go, spoilers, spoilers, it's spoiler time. Wait, though, why did Batman say that? I don't know. I don't know. Why? I don't know. Batman really likes the Power Rangers. I don't know. He's, the eight-year-old in him is like, yeah, yeah Power Rangers. Power Rangers. Punch them for all the dead parents. I mean, <laughs> for Billy. Anyway, so... A spoiler review of Power Rangers. I really, I, I guess one of the most effective parts of the movie, the most effective part of the movie, was definitely the five actors they got to play the Power Rangers. Yeah. Strong cast. It, I was so pleasantly surprised. Strong, unique, yes. individualistic characters yes. that did not rely on being reductive racial stereotypes. Yes. As Power Rangers has done in the past. Yes. Okay. Thank fucking God. Thank God. Um. So w- they were able to get a member of the LGBT community in there. That's cool. Well, and they were able to get a member of the of LGBT community. The bully. The biggest community. The biggest right. thing they did, which really I was, I was so happy about, just because, I it's like it's so great to see, was that Billy the Blue Ranger, mm-hmm. was 
autistic or on the autism spectrum, as he said. And when I heard that, like, and the fact that they made a point to make it, like, one of the part, for beginning. That's one of the the main plot points. Like, the first 15 minutes, like. I was so pleasantly surprised. I was so happy. I sat there thinking, you know, and at first I was nervous because I was nervous because I was like, oh no, how are they going to play? Power Rangers might screw this up really bad. I was like, how are they going to play this? Also, the actor that plays Billy, um, I believe his name is R.J. Seiler. Um, Yes, R.J. Seiler. He does not have autism. Um, From what I can tell, he's not an autistic, he's not a person with autism. Um, And I was nervous, you know, obviously someone playing a person with autism or an autistic person. Mm. I, I I don't know which one's the proper phrasing. Um, mm. You get nervous that they're going to play Rain Man or some shit. You know? You're, yeah. You get nervous they're going to play every bad stereotype, every terrible, like... Mm. But he, for a movie about five fucking teenagers who get giant robots and fight a woman... Who For has space a, crystals? Space crystals over a with a big giant gold monster. His performance was remarkably subtle and like and grounding, grounded and and well done and really and, heartfelt. And it was and it was it was such a nice thing to see and because it, it it showed me the power of acting because this this kid Whoa. he was out of all That's of the, the true out power of, of all, the Rangers. No, out of all the actors in the movie, he's done the biggest stuff in terms of America. He did Me Earl and the Dying Girl. He was in that movie, and that movie kind of came out and and it was an indie movie, but it was something that it was, was kind of like in, yeah. yeah, it was successful. It was in the public eye. Um, and all the other actors have done small stuff. They haven't really done anything big. One of them was a singer. Um, I believe Becky G. Trini, the girl who played Trini. Um, she's a singer. And then um, the guy who played Zach, um, he is a Chinese actor, so he's mostly done things in China. Um, and he was awesome. He's one of the favorite parts of the movie. Yeah, was he was great too. Han so let, let's, swagger. Let's, let's 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 keep Billy first, and then we can you know move on Break to him. Okay. But um, but basically, like, so Arthur Tyler was the most. I think he's the most seasoned out of all the actors in terms of range, at least from looking at their of the careers. Rangers. You know, looking at of the Rangers, yes. Yeah, and Brian Cranston's like, fuck you. You, it just it shows you like how it really to me what I like is I appreciate the power of acting because a good actor sometimes a good actor can not take a bad script and do anything with it but sometimes an actor can take a bad script and do amazing things with it but what's great is he's not working with a bad script the script was pretty damn good Mm -hmm. and for what the movie was and so to do that it was like you really got to see Billy became the heart of the of the the group and not in a contrived everyone has to protect Billy kind of way. Not at all. He yeah. was on equal level with them. And especially not in a way with, like, Billy was... Like, yeah. most movies that make someone, like, the heart of the team, they do it by everybody, like, having, like, Pitying an him off or... scene with yeah. him where they're, like, helping fix his yes. brokenness exactly. or something. You exactly. know what I mean? Where they all, like, are... But in this movie, it was just done in a very group way that just... Worked. It was just the camaraderie. Really, they, they, they. You could tell they spent time going. We have to make these kids likable, and we have to make them like each other. And they, and the group has to work. You can't have a Power Rangers movie where the camaraderie of the group is non-existent because mm-hmm. you're gonna be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And so it worked so well, and it was really cool to see they they did a juxtaposition kind of thing because they had. Um, Jason, who was a popular quarterback, star football player who fucked up his life, um, kind of at first um, bonding with Billy, who was, you know, for all intents and purposes, he was, you know, obviously not very popular. Mm-hmm. Kids probably didn't want to be his friend because, you know... He's it awkward. Just, it is. It's just the. It is just segments, the way it. it yeah. Unfortunately, this is what happens. It, and the sad. The thing is, too, is you know this. this is and we com- saw him being bullied. This is a com- yeah. And this is a common tale. Like how many Buzzfeed stories have we seen about a kid had a birthday party and he's autistic and nobody came. and nobody fucking came to his birthday party. Like it's fucking. It's fucked up. Yeah. But it's real. This shit is happening to people. And so it was just like I think. They, and they and they and they put Billy in such an emotionally amazing place because like his dad was dead so Mm -hmm. all of a sudden he has that background you know his he has a tragic backstory he has a like out of all of them he has a really like tough 
you know, he had a tough run. Upbringing, yeah. You know, he had a tough run. His dad died. Like, his dad was his... His hero, his dad and he was, was the a guy. Hard worker. He was a miner. He was like you know, a real man. His dad worker. was the his dad was the guy that was the per, was his friend. Yeah. Basically, you got the sense that his dad was his friend, and yeah. his dad was his only friend. And his dad died, and it was like fuck. But he, but he being Billy, being himself, he found a way to kind of like keep Coke. going and yeah. and be himself, and it was great. And so, I ended up like it. It got to the point where at one point in the movie, there's an emotional scene where Rita Repulsa kidnaps them and. And I cried. I didn't expect that to get so emotional about the movie, but like, like there was a, a, a scare for Billy. I don't, you know, like where you know, if you've seen the movie, he, he dies. He does. It's not scare. He dies, and it's. I was crying. I really yeah. was, and it was genuine. Like I really felt something. I felt in that moment that, and that, and it was a cool thing to see that they all became a team when they were all like, "I would sacrifice my life for him. I would sacrifice my life for him," and that was really cool. And like. That made this movie so... Like, it made me like this movie. It made me walk out of this movie and go... Like, it was almost kind of like the... And I maybe And see, for some people, they they would hate this. The robots and that stuff were secondary to the cool kind of human team... Human story. Human story. And I know that for... And actually, interestingly enough, some of the critics said that's what they did not like about this was movie. Was the humanity? Was the fact that it's focused too much on the characters and not enough on the fact that they're power They're fighting rangers. and they have powers yeah. and they're beating up people. And, yeah. And no. so, for some people, they would not like this movie because of that. But for me, it made it better. And here's why. I've seen a million movies about kids or young people, young attractive athletic people getting superpowers and fighting things and punching stuff in the uh, face. I've seen a lot of that. We see it every summer. But never movies where everyone becomes best friends and, from and different walks exactly, of life. Exactly, and on. it's like it's kind of like it's nice to see a movie. I almost thought it was kind of like they were really going for this Breakfast Club vibe yeah, yeah. that I liked. About it. And and the original Power Rangers kind of went for that, too. Because they were all in detention together, weren't they? They were. They met in detention. I can't it's remember. Possible. It's they possible. They met in detention. They met in something. There they was met something some they met. They met in some Saturday, like, They did. It was some Saturday activity. thing that they were together in. And I remember that. And, um... And... and, and but, I, but I liked how very much Breakfast Club this was. You know what I mean? And... I, I, I did, I like the vibe. And you and they played on that as the movie goes along. There's some sequences where they're all in the detention together and they're playing around and they're they're testing out their powers. And yeah. I thought it was That was like I really liked that stuff. The movie was awesome and the thing that scared everybody, or at least scared me going in, was that the movie would be like too much like chronicle. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it did have the shades of, you know... It did have some Chronicle, but it never never fell too deep into it. No. You know? They and always kept it so light and so, like, fun. It did. That it never got too bogged and down every, in, like, and we are trapped with powers. Exactly. And every one of the characters had their own personalities that were distinct and vibrant and immediate. And you knew who they were. And you wanted to know more about them. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think a standout, like we said, was the Zack, the Black Ranger, was played by Ludi Lin. And the reason why he's a standout is because all we're saying is, Stephen and I are saying is, if they do a Cowboy Bebop movie, Whoa. This, kid, this kid needs to be Spice, Spice Spiegel. Spiegel. Like, he was great. He got the goods. He had this cocky... Like, he was funny. He had this cocky thing about him that worked so well. If they he could, was athletic. He was attractive. He was great. If they he could go was, back in time and redo Iron Fist and put him in... Oh, my God, That would yeah. be awesome, too. That would be awesome. He is... He's proof that there are so many amazing Asian or Asian-American actors out there that need a chance. Mm -hmm. That are... That could blow some of these... You know, the people that we've been... The same people that we've been seeing out of the water. And it's so nice to see someone like him in a movie role. You know? And I really liked that. And his storyline was so endearing. Yes. Like, to make it about, like, him and his mother. And, like, oh dealing with... Oh, my God. That was, like, the other, like... illness was, like, so moment. real. Yeah. And, like, him, like, coping by trying to, like, take on all the responsibility of the yeah. family. And avoiding school. And it was kind of, like... Like, you could see, yeah. like... 
Like, I like that they had all, like, these sort of, like, teenage, like, urban myths, sort of, you mm-hmm. know? And what I was scared about, too, is when, you know, we first saw him in the trailer park, I was worried they were going to go to that um, stereotype he's trope poor, of, like, he's dude. poor and he gets beaten by his drunk mm, dad. Yeah. You know, that, like, poor yeah, people yeah. are all a bunch of alcoholic assholes who beat their children. And don't know how to raise kids. And yeah. don't know how to raise kids. And I loved that it, no, it was not that at all. Like, his mom is sick and he takes care of her. And he takes on the world. And it also helped to explain his character why he's so reckless. Because he's kind of like, his mom is facing death every day. You know what I mean? Why should he, you know... Yeah, care about living forever. Care about living forever. He's taking the risk, you know? You could see that in his character. Um, I really liked... Yeah, I liked I liked everybody. Um, the guy who played Jason yeah. was... was First of all, he kind of looks like... Steven says he looks like Chris Pine. I think he looks like Zac Efron's cousin. He was really attractive. And he was great. He was good. I think, yeah, the weakest actor was definitely Becky G. Was Trini. Trini. Yeah. But... But it worked what for was character. Great, exactly. What was great is that they gave her a role that was right. Mm-hmm. And that's the, the mark of a good director. But that's supposed to be, like... It made sense. She was, like, the, yeah. the odd... They, they gave her at least, like, the odd man out in the squad. Yeah. Which was cool. And a lot of her acting was quiet, the, so she didn't have to do too much dialogue. And yeah. the movie also did a lot of cool, like Power Rangers, like stuff fans yes. have always yes, 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 wanted yes. and like to thought talk of about for the years. actual Power Ranger part of the Power Rangers. Yeah, like Zordon being a Red Ranger that was like good. That was really fan cool. fodder. Billy, and, and of course Rita being a Green Ranger. Of course, as, like, as Zordon, you know, we had. Um, why am I drawing a blank? Brian Cranston. Thank you, Brian Cranston, who was fantastic because he's fantastic. Mm-hmm. He's just good, and and I was and also as somebody who was the number one reason I was most nervous about this movie was because I did not like the way that Rita Repulsa looked. I was won over by Elizabeth Banks. She was mm-hmm. having way too much fun in that part, and she yeah. loved it. She was having. Well, it a good was time. cool how they made her like this m- alien, like yeah. morphing through the movie into this. Evil, powerful witch yes. person. Yes, she was. She it actually her storyline actually like worked like from the trailers it seemed like that would be the hardest part of the film yeah. film to swallow. But it worked, and even the shoehorned in product placement made the film so much more real and so much more fun. Yeah, and we had so much fun every let's, time they said Krispy Kreme. Let's talk about what, well, but just to touch on Rita Repulsa, what I like too is they actually kind of made her scary a little. A they little, made her a monster. Little, they made yeah. her a little creepy, and 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 that's hard to do. Because if you if you know the original Rita Repulsa, the reason why she's fabulous is because she's basically like a drag queen. Ooh, she's ah. got a huge cowl made of like the sun and big buns in her hair. Like I, if I ever saw a drag queen doing Rita Repulsa cosplay, I would just drop dead of amazement because yeah. Rita. I want to cosplay Rita Repulsa oh. one day and do the big fucking hair piece. Mm-hmm. I that's one of my like dream cosplays. You know, you know I would fucking yeah. bust out Rita Repulsa style, my huge fucking staff, and I would be like, yes, let's do it. I would love to do a Rita Repulsa cosplay because Rita Repulsa is the shit, and the Japanese actress that played her. Back in the day, I loved her so much. I know they eventually recast her with a Spanish actress, well, the but Mexican, yeah, the think. Mexican, but the Japanese actress was better. I don't like her better. I'm sure she was. She was better. Um, the movie was <laughs> more phenomenal. Bill Hader as Alpha Five. I was really, I enjoyed it. I especially liked like, usually in movies where they make somebody all CGI and then they have like, you know, wacky body physics. Mm-hmm. That usually doesn't work. But for Alpha 5, it remarkably fit his character yeah. in a comfortable way and the way they were, like, depicting aliens in the movie. Goldar, who I have played many times as a child, <laughs> I was most in, disheartened by his just being a amorphous, amorphous monster. Amorphous gold monster? Yeah, yeah, he didn't like the... Yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, he could have been more impressive, but they were like let's make it made out of gold you know yeah. so it's kind of like okay at least he wasn't played by 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 uh, Mike Myers as gold member yes that was um a win. and we need to talk about the funniest part of the movie which at the same time yeah like they made it work i've never I, when i when i after i got out of the movie the first thing i wrote to my facebook people were never you will not believe how important Krispy Kreme is to this film 
<laughs> You'd never believe it. Yeah. It, it was just kind of like, I really, I think, I think this is what happened. I think that the people who wrote this movie, directed this movie, have a sense of humor. And they were like, fuck man, we gotta sell Krispy Kreme in the middle of a Power Rangers movie. How the fuck are we gonna do that? And they were just like, let's make it the most important part of the film. And it was just kind of like, to do that was so funny to me. I know some people would look mm -hmm. at that as total laziness, like just cash grab, yeah. be able to sell their product placement as much as Most possible. Most people would just be like, but, so the Power Rangers, after they work out, go to the Krispy Kreme, but have a bite I to really, eat. But I really loved the way that they made it this running joke, that mm -hmm. it's in the middle, that the, the Zeo crystal, the center of all life, is in the middle of the, is underneath the Krispy Kreme in the middle mm -hmm. of town. And it's just so funny when they're like, let's get to the Krispy Kreme. Like, you it's it's like it it, it it didn't take me out of the movie completely like it made me giggle but like it was part of the fun mm -hmm. you could tell at that point they were having fun yeah. when they get they finally get to the giant monsters and gold monsters and Rita Repulse with her putties everywhere they were having fun mm -hmm. with the movie and I and I really appreciated that I think that's why it made me like it so much more the other ranger psychological thing I also appreciated was when Zordon's giving out the ranger code or whatever one of his stipulations is that rangers never escalate conflicts, which I thought was a genius, like, you know, logic reason why they don't just always whip out the zords and just crush the monsters with a finger. Mm -hmm. So, kudos, screenwriters of Power Rangers. Kudos. Kudos, yes. I, I, I the, the one thing that I felt, you know, was kind of extra silly was... Them learning how to suplex monsters, and then with <laughs> the Megazord itself, suplexing Goldar for the win. Hey, I was, thought that was, that you was know, fun. a little bit... Yeah, too much. A little, it was silly, it was fun, but I don't know. <laughs> I just didn't expect it in Power Rangers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it was kind of like a mix of, of wrestling, and <laughs> I have no excuses for it. It was silly, but I liked it. It was funny. And it's it's interesting how this movie was able to take a big risk and yet hedge their bets, you know? Mm -hmm. They had an existing property. They have five, you know, untested leads. Yes. But they padded themselves. They put two bankable actors who are fan favorites, synonymous with quality films, Elizabeth Banks and Brian Cranston, who usually when they put their names on something... It usually means something. Mm-hmm. And they delivered a freaking great movie. Like, they did. I feel like Disney's probably kicking themselves in the head right now. Well, they didn't buy it. Because they owned Power Rangers for a while. Yeah, they did. They, they owned did. it for a few years, and then they sold it because they were yeah. like, this is crap property. Because they were like, we can't do anything with it, they yeah. They, 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 they've already done, they thought they had already done everything with it. Mm-hmm. Because they had. They have already brought they back did. the original they Rangers. Yeah. They already, like, they've done everything they've done with Neo, it. Except Neo for actually Rangers. throwing honest yeah. money at it. Yeah. Like, this is the biggest, probably the biggest push the Rangers have ever gotten a hundred million dollar oh, movie. Oh, absolutely. And like, that's my thing, too. Fuck. I found this a risk. Someone said spend a hundred million dollars to make this movie. Like, how? Well, because they saw Star Trek, like... Power Rangers is our Star Trek. Like, Power like, Rangers I is... Yes. That, that, that was the thing that I, that got people talking about Power Rangers was the success of Pacific Rim. When we yes. saw that, yes. everyone was like, shit, we're ready to see giant robots fight. Oh, and I'm sorry, but yeah, there's no... Let me tell you something. Pacific Rim, like, restarted the monster movie franchise. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because before Pacific Rim, we had had, what, the Go Godzilla movie? No, we didn't even have that. We that we, No, we, the bad one with Matthew, Matthew yeah, Roderick. We had that one, and we had, um, we, we just had that indie movie, Monsters. Yes, but that, that was an indie movie. came out around the same time as Pacific Rim. And that was an indie movie. Then. No, but I'm saying, like, those two movies, basically... Yeah. Set the stage for now why we have Kong Skull yes. Island and we have Godzilla. And, 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 have, and like, Pacific Rim needs to know, get all the props Rangers. for what it did because it made monsters fun and scary and and it showed you well, you can make a movie that has heart and emotion and have giant monsters in it and not be like campy, totally stupid silly. destruction. Like, every, it's a little bit of campy, but it's it works. You know what I mean? And and so it's like well, the the thing is too is the monster movies take. The emphasis, like, if Roland Emmerich, we saw his Godzilla movie, his emphasis is on 
human, like, destruction. You know what I mean? That's his yeah. character growth is how can we destroy a city. Yeah. When, you know, if you put these giant things in a story that has interesting, fun characters, you have an interesting, fun story. Mm-hmm. I, I really, like, I really was, um... I think the most apropos yeah. movie now to touch up on and sort of pair with Power Rangers in discussion would be Kong Skull Island. That would be, yes. Since Another giant, giant monster monsters, movie. giant monster. Okay. Moving on. So, Power Rangers, five Rangers, four, four Rangers from Earth. So, like... 4.5. So, 9.5 Rangers. You can't have half a Ranger. Yes, I can. You can't have some, some yes, ranger running around on legs. Yes, I can. They cannot flail I don't their know arms. What I want. That doesn't make sense. This is an arbitrary rating system. Fine. So four, you're arbitrarily giving me ass? 4.5 popcorns. 4.5 florps. 4.5 slurble doubles. Now you're just talking gibberish. Okay? Slurble doubles are not for movies, they're only for poop rating. On my planet. On your planet? Yeah. For rating your poop? Yeah. Wow. On my planet, the Zeo crystal is not under Krispy Kreme. That was like five-year-old humor right there. But they're only for poop! You had nothing. I reverted back to Power Rangers days. I reverted back to Power Rangers days. You had nothing. The movie has made me full child. That's how I know when someone had, when Steven has nothing. And it's late at night. All he can do is make poop jokes. It's late at night. I'm sleepy. Don't talk about, don't tell me. So our next movie is called Poop (laughs) Skull Island. (laughs) Sorry, Kong, Kong King Poop Poop. Island. <laughs> King Poop. King Poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best was, uh, I, I, there was like some stupid um, like Facebook thing where it was like, you know, take a movie title and just replace one word with asshole. <laughs> what do you and my, my favorite one that I had thought of was the asshole of the Furious, as a rip off the fate of the Furious. <laughs> But you said to do Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Asshole. <laughs> yeah, because that's the gay porn version yeah. of Harry Potter. And then other notable mentions were... Attack of the Assholes. Like Attack of the Clones? Yeah. Okay. No. That wasn't one, though. Star no. Assholes. No, that's what Asshole says. Wars. <laughs> yeah. I was going to go the Asshole Awakens. The Asshole Awakens. It's yeah. stronger. Side note. Okay. <laughs> So King Kong is was is a good movie. Kong Skull Island, the what the original King Kong? Which one? The Peter Jackson one? The old school, nineteen thirty nine. Let's kick it old school. Nobody cares about that. Let's talk about, about a little Muppet that used to fucking Nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about that. Well, let's just say Kong Skull Island is a building upon the world of Godzilla, the film that came out recently yeah the film a that few had years ago the film that everyone lamented it for having eight minutes of godzilla yes that did those eight minutes better than then most movies most did movies that year. whatever yeah the eight minutes of godzilla were better than a lot of shit going yeah. on and better and eight minutes of godzilla in that godzilla movie was better than the entire movie of that stupid 1998 1998 godzilla, godzilla when he was basically just a giant iguana um so anyway even though what Frank no. would love but to... But still not as Frank good. will go on a diet of how, how Godzilla yeah. 98 was better. He one time yeah. got heated at me. He got angry at me. Yeah. I, I have half a podcast of him... Yelling at me. ...trying to talk about how good that movie was. And yeah. And I was just getting annoyed and turning it off. I just... But I, I, I can't. I can't listen yeah. to that. It's like trying... For someone trying to tell me the world yeah. is flat. We love you, Frank. Feels, it just feels illogical to me. But anyway, I don't want to start another five-hour shit. Anyway, but... Godzilla, I liked the Godzilla movie. I yes, there was less Godzilla. So this movie, then you would hope if this is like but, Godzilla, King Kong, Universal Monster yes. Universe. These, this movie towards, is the sequel know, slash prequel. Yes, to Godzilla. to Godzilla versus King Kong. They're building upon Godzilla. They're building up to Godzilla versus King Kong in twenty twenty. And, and this is the prequel to Godzilla because this takes place in the seventies, and it is. Awesome. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking awesome. First of all, this movie was super cinematic. Like, mm-hmm. every shot was, they were going for 
lush, yeah, every, cool scape. Every shot could have been like a poster, poster image yeah. or like a graphic novel, like yes. the perfect shot for it a graphic novel. It felt very comic book like yeah. in the way they shot the movie. Presentation. Um, they had these great moments. Someone said it was anime like. Um, there was a particular scene involving a gas mask and a samurai sword. They said it was very anime like. Uh. Um, I think, first of all, you have great actors in this movie. So, you know the movie's gonna just have compelling performances. Because you have John Goodman and Tom Hiddleston and Samuel L. Jackson and Brie Larson and, and all these people. And, you know, you have good actors. Good actors make good movies. Well, you hope. Um, but usually good actors make better movies. Usually good actors make good decisions. Yeah, you hope. Um, here's looking at you, Tom Cruise. I'm kidding. Hey man, mummy's gonna show you. I'm the fucking mummy. That could be his like first like. No, I mean, he's made a couple movies that weren't as good, but I'm worried this is his first stinker. No, the thing is when well, did he if make Tom Cruise movie? doesn't make movies, like even when Tom Cruise doesn't make money in movies, yeah, usually they're still like lauded in some way. Yeah. Like, usually they're still, like, successful in action. Because he usually makes good decisions. Yeah, he does. He, for someone, he, he, I don't know if his weird Scientology, like, people are giving him creepy brain wave decisions. Yeah. Like, make this mission impossible, Phil. We've done statistics. Fly like yourself on a plane. the audience want to see you hanging from a plane. Do it, Tom Cruise. I can't tell if, like, his movies are good because he, he just continuously ups the ante on his own self. I wouldn't be fucking surprised if he really wasn't a plane crash for the mummy! <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he was I like, crash, crash for real. <laughs> Harrison Ford survived it. I can survive it. <laughs> Sir Harrison Ford was like, no, put me in the plane, fucking throw it on the ground. I wouldn't be surprised. If Wrap Tom me Cruise... in this toilet paper. I want to be a mummy. I would not be surprised if Tom Cruise really crashed a plane to do this movie because it just kind of seems like every movie that he's doing action he, he's because he's a piece of um trained Start certified man stuntman yeah, yeah he's been one for a while and it just kind of seems like he's trying to do shit to piss off the other certified stuntmen to just be like what can I do put me on a plane and they're like fuck now someone's gonna ask me to be on a fucking plane the next fucking movie I do you know what I mean and it's just kind of like is Tom Cruise trying to ruin stunting for everybody yeah. like these people have limbs Tom Cruise they want to keep them stop fucking around yeah. do you remember like... there was like an MTV movie awards <laughs> skit that they did around the time I guess it was Mission Impossible 2 was coming out mm -hmm. where it was like Ben Stiller was Tom Cruise's stunt double oh yeah his yeah, name yeah, was yeah. Tom Cruise C-R-U-Z yeah 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 and how he never I think I think I think the, the joke was that he never got to work because Tom yeah, Cruise. Yeah, because Tom Cruise always did, did everything. I think did that was what himself. it was, yeah. But um anyway, so yeah, so like it we were talking about Kong so yeah, so, so usually King Kong is so good make, we started talking about Tom Cruise. Yes we did. Because so, they're both universal properties and yes. we're trying to protect the company. Yes, of course. Um Kong so what I'm saying is good actors usually make good decisions and they make it a good decision with Kong. Um it was just a really beautiful, awesome, fun movie. Yeah. And it was dark in a good way, like, in a perfect way. It had that kind of, like, that horror of the monster island, yeah. you know. And, and and the best part is, though, it totally put you in a position where you really don't feel bad for these human beings. Like, they come into this island, and they immediately just start fucking shit up. They start blowing up the island. They're dropping bombs to to geolocate the silent size, and you're sitting there going, "All right, you get what you deserve." The the you get what you deserve. The thing that the movie managed to do and that was really effective and fun was, they had all these characters that, in other movies that are like horror based, mm -hmm. would be just like plain assholes. Yes, you know, I would be canon. Fun and right. they managed to make all these characters into like fun, likable, and that's but also frivolous Yeah. And what was interesting characters. to me is that they kind of start you out not liking these people because they're dropping bombs on the island. And only two of them are like, oh, maybe shouldn't we shouldn't do this. think about this? Yeah, and they're like... Is this how <laughs> science works? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, that's my reenactment of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> As she but, gesticulates her arms up and down. <laughs> but, and so you immediately are like, all right, you guys are going to get fucked up by King Kong and no one gives a fuck about yeah. you. But what was funny is once they're on the ground... They actually, re you re, 
you you're re- reintroduced to them. Reintroduce them and you like them. You feel bad for them. At mm-hmm. least most of them. Because now there are people stuck in a bad situation. Yes, exactly. And the thing is, too, is you realize that really only one or two guys in this situation are the, are the assholes. Architects like, of their the, own destruction. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it's like the scientist guy, the monarch guy, John Goodman's character, who's so desperate to find and kill monsters that he was like... I'm going to piss one off. And I'll put all the people in danger. (laughs) Exactly. He's a reckless asshole. He deserves to get eaten. But all these other guys, especially, like, was really cool having them come out from Vietnam. So it it was a kind of a a really kind of, like, interesting thing. Like, these guys had just seen shit, you know? And they had just been in a war that meant nothing. You know? Like, a war that basically was like, okay, why have we been doing this for all these years and shit like that? And then they stick them in this terrible situation. Like, these poor guys just want to get home. And they get fucking stuck on a monster island where they're getting killed Mm -hmm. by bamboo spiders and creepy... Spoilers, spoilers. These are the spoilers. (laughs) They were already in the spoilers. King Kong spoilers. spoilers. They were already in the spoilers from before. But not the spoilers for King Kong. Oh, I'm sorry. Bamboo spider spoiled everything. Sorry, guys. Bamboo spider was the most important part of the film. It was, li- it was totally the... It was yeah. the goriest part of this PG-13 the PG-13 ab- film. That, yes. Let's talk about that. That was extremely graphic. Yeah. A man and getting impo- impaled a man by a bamboo stick leg? A man gets impaled by a bamboo stick leg. And, I mean, you see his mouth stretch open with this... And it's almost like obscene. It's almost like, like a reverse... Huge, like a reverse Like dicking. porno shot. Yeah, it's like yeah, a reverse yeah. rape. Except for, like, you know, it's a woman... I don't see. There's no such thing as reverse rape. There is only rape. But I guess it was kind of like a. Uh, uh, is there no so, such thing as reverse there is no such thing as reverse rape? You can only be raped. I think you, I think you solved the mystery. <laughs> what would reverse rape be? I think, what could be the reverse like, of rape? I feel like we just had like thoughts that only people that actually rape people have. Oh God, no. No, uh, no, not not in that way. Uh, but I just feel like in order to think about like the idea of a reverse rape. You have to rape? You you have to be stuck well, in a situation I've never raped, so. where you're like, damn, I raped somebody. And I've was, never like, raped rape. anyone. Neither have I. Neither have I. Okay. But my but, point is that I don't... Okay. How do you reverse rape someone? You can't reverse rape them. That's what I'm saying. That's why this is like... This is like Confucius, like Zen, <laughs> Taoist, like meditation <laughs> thoughts. You cannot reverse rape. Like, this is like the way to, like, blank your mind. Oh, my God. Like, you reverse rape your mind. What does that even mean? Oh, my God. Anyway. So, but no, it it felt like a... Let's talk... It felt like a subversion of a rape of a woman in that situation, where Mm -hmm. it would be, like, an erotic, like, uh... It was like a guy. You know, yeah. I don't know. It just it felt very obscene. Mm-hmm. Maybe we're reading too much into it sexually, but it was no, like a it huge was, stick going through this guy's mouth yeah. looking like a big old dick. Like, and it, it was like, scary. Hey. And it's it was scary. creepy. Yeah, it was scary and creepy. And it automatically ratcheted ratcheted up the horror, the, like the threat oof. level and horror yeah. in the film, like in a way where they were like threat level midnight. Like the yeah the the basis the reference point for this movie, I guess, to be compared to would be Peter Jackson's yes. King Kong, of which course. also yeah. tackled Skull Island. Yes. And just that one horrific image yeah. managed to create like so much dread of mm-hmm, the island mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that, you know, Peter Jackson had to spend like 30, 40 minutes, minutes creating. Free. Yeah, exactly. You know? Where this was just, this guy's like, la la la, bleh, like, and he's like, yeah. and all of a sudden it's like, oh my god, there's a fucking spider monster! Yeah. And especially <laughs> that scene had the most, like, Vietnam-y yes. sort of feel yes, to it. Yes, it did. You know what I you mean? You definitely saw the... They, what I liked in this movie is they were playing on, like, Apocalypse Now. They had, like, the slow-mo shots of helicopters, the slow-mo shot of Kong, and then kind of, like, Samuel L. Jackson's character goes Well, he through. was a colonel, just yeah. like... Colonel, I think it's Klutz in in uh, Apocalypse Marla Brando's Now. Marlon character, yeah. Yeah. So he was definitely. And he's also going, bald, like Colonel yes, Klutz. He was definitely going yeah. through his his uh, his own version of uh, cause 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 what happens is Colonel Klutz, Klutz, Klutz. I think it's is Klutz. It Klutz. I don't think it's Klutz, sir. Uh, maybe maybe I'm thinking of. Uh, I think you're thinking of Hogan's Kong. Heroes or something. Yeah, I think so. It's possible. Hmm. Hogan's Heroes versus Apocalypse oh, Now. Oh, no. Oh, my God. He said Colonel Klutz. I'm going to laugh at you. Oh, I just have yes. to make sure that I, I get this right because I just I want to laugh at you so hard. Okay. Oh, no. Let's see what he's called. Oh, no. He Kurtz. hurts you. Colonel Klutz. Colonel Klutz. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Klutz has gone AWOL. 
He keeps on slipping on banana the peels. Best, this is the best part. <laughs> is that you know how fucked up and serious that movie is. And why in their right mind would they name the one of the most serious characters of the film <laughs> Colonel Klutz? It's but late yet, at night. Your brain went there. It's late your at brain night. said, huh. no, no. Colonel Klutz, my friend, he was in the shit. Anyway, Colonel... <laughs> Is he even a colonel? He's a colonel. Okay, you. yes, you're right. Colonel... He's a fucking colonel. Kurtz. Samuel L. Jackson's character felt very much like Colonel Kurtz. And I was also tripped up because in Hogan's <laughs> Heroes... It's Colonel They Kurtz. have Colonel Wilhelm Klink. Klink. Colonel Klink. Klink. Colonel Klink. Clink, Klutz, Kurt. <laughs> Kurt. But nobody's named Colonel Klutz. <laughs> I'm just imagining like one of those old timey cartoon characters like Colonel Klutz. <laughs> you, those grenades are awfully close <laughs> to that TNT. <laughs> well, I oh, just tried to. Don't keep worry, it. General. I got it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Now remember, Colonel, I want your division to march in a single file in perfect formation. Yes, sir, I promise they'll never fall out of line. That's how he talks. Colonel Clutz, <laughs> why are they running around like there's ants in their pants? Because they were attacked by ants. <laughs> because you told us to sit on those pants. <laughs> Some stupid we shit. We told you to sit on the TNT. We sat on ant pals. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Clutz. Why are you having a picnic in the middle of the battlefield? Colonel Klutz, if we would have had you during Normandy, we would have all died that day. <laughs> well, good thing I was taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I passed out on a U-boat. Colonel Klutz. Like <laughs> uh, anyway. Colonel Klutz was not impaled through the mouth. <laughs> so, Samuel Jackson's character. I think I got a title Shit, for this Kurt episode. <laughs> go, go, Colonel Klutz. Go, go, Colonel Klutz. Um, let's just... Samuel Jackson's character definitely had kind of a Colonel Kurtz feeling. And they were some Apocalypse Now moments, kind of homages yeah. in this movie. Which is cool yeah. to take a monster movie, which is what I've been saying all along. The best way to do these kinds of movies is to take effective movie, genre. genre movies and use them as backdrops to make these movies interesting. Like, taking political espionage thrills and making a Captain mm-hmm. America movie. Taking um, uh, X-Men, you know, Nixon, Days of Future Past. Days of, take, yeah, taking a Western and making Logan. Mm-hmm. You know, like, stuff like that. That's the best way to make these movies. Because what you're doing is you're taking a, a, a well-known formula that works. And and works for serious, interesting stories, <coughs> and you're putting it with monsters in it. And so, what you're focusing on first and foremost is the character work and the and the script. And then, secondly, King Kong, Spider Monsters, Bamboo People. You know what I mean? Like whatever. So that gets to become a nice like garnish. Yeah, exactly, on this exactly. Masterpiece. It's not just okay. Everybody focus on the monster all the time. Mm-hmm. Blah 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 blah. Um, and so that really works about Kong Skull Island. Yeah. I think. I mean, there's not much to say. The plot, you know, the plot yeah. is the plot. It moves it's along. Just, it's a movie. It's a jungle picture. It's just a movie that knows what it when is to have, then, yeah. like, great moments. Yes, it did. Like, any movie that realizes if Sam Jackson is the antagonist of this giant monster, they need to have, like, a cool stare down. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. any movie that is going to take the time and be like, let's shoot this all from... The POV of inside a gas mask, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, for this action sequence. Like, they effectively went beyond the the restrictions of having so much money they could do it any yes, way they want. exactly, exactly. Like, they, they, they went stylistic they made, and it exactly, worked. Exactly, and they made an effort. And, and, and that's another thing, too, is, like, sometimes with these movies, they run the risk of... Like, I know a lot of people talk about color palette. And some of these movies, lately superhero movies especially, they have the same color mm-hmm. palette. And people are like, fuck, you know, oranges and browns blues or whatever, and blues yeah. and oranges and again. And it's always nice to see a movie that's trying to kind of take itself out of that and, and, and do something different and do something interesting and have, and have a different kind of feel to it instead of the same shaky cam shit 
you and know. <clears throat> Hiddleston got a chance to play like a really fun yes adventurer, but that still like in the way that Chris Pratt's Owen is yeah. like fits his movie star persona. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like this character, I thought fit Hiddleston's yes movie star persona like and perfectly. and he wasn't too and you know I was worried that he was because he was like the lone explorer that he was gonna be like, save the day too guy. macho and machismo. But no, it's like yeah, like having a guy like Hiddleston who knows how to kind of pick the vulnerability up of a character. Yeah, he was very collaborative. It was a collaborative yeah. thing. And he's he's the guy who's No there one ever because... felt like their dick was bigger than everyone no, else's yeah. because everyone the only person footing. who felt like their dick was bigger than everyone else's was Samuel Jackson, and that made sense. Yeah, because he's got to stand had... up against King Kong's big ass dick. Yeah, and he had nothing <laughs> and he had nothing else to lose at that point because, you know, his character from the beginning was a man with nothing left. Like, he had yeah. fought in the war, he didn't know what else he was going to do yeah. with himself. This was, like, his cause slug. He'd reached the finish line and he'd yeah. been dreading it, Exactly. Basically. So, like, having this was, like, his new war. But the, obviously the whole point is, you're never yeah. going to win in a war against Kong. Kong's going to fuck yeah. you up. Fuck you, Kong. Kong wins. Mm-hmm. And um, I like the way the movie did. They made Kong scary and intimidating, but also made him vulnerable, which is always mm-hmm. really important. You always have to have Kong have be kind of a vulnerable character because he's a lonely guy, you know. Yeah, he's a lone he's lonely. Monkey. He's got he's no. He's a lone He's got dude. no family. He's got no family. He's a lone like, dude. He's kind of like on his own. He's a very stoic. It's so sad that character. one of the plot points or one of like the set pieces of this film are his dead is built around his dead parents' yeah, bodies. Like, exactly. oh my god! Like, if Batman had to perform action sequences with his dead parents, with there. his dead parents' corpses there, he would not be as effective as no, Kong is. No, he would not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it for you, Bob Dad. Oh God! Like yeah, like if he had to carry around his dead parents' bodies everywhere. No, no. I mean yeah, and and what's great is that they really showed a tragic side to Kong. Like Kong, they made Kong. He's alone. He's alone, and they made Kong a a not like Godzilla. Like Godzilla. In, in the new movie, they made him a protector. Mm. They made him a guardian. He's not doing these things because he's just an asshole. He's not an asshole who just wants to... He really is... Yeah. He's, is he, this is his role. That was another it's thing. It's not this his movie fault did... that when he punches the air, a suit, like a fucking hurricane forms because yeah. he's so strong and you get blown away. Well, shit, collateral fucking damage, man. What are you going to do? And what's interesting is is that the John Goodman's character... It is implied that the reason why he's hunting monsters is because his boat was taken down by Godzilla. Back in the day. Back in the day. So, and we wonder why. Why did Godzilla eat the boat? Was there a reason? Did he just get mad one day? Was he just trying to do something else? And he's like, what? You know, like, Godzilla. You know, who knows? The movie, one last note Mm -hmm. about the movie. Well, one last good thing and then one small bad thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The one small bad thing. Just that one small bad thing. I felt like it over, it was the the movie was overwhelmed by like too many seventy songs. Yes. Like they could have had the a soundtrack a little much. They could have cut down four seventy songs yeah. and still had plenty of seventies in that they, movie. The soundtrack got a little much. It got a little It was too, very trailery. It got a little know? too referential. Like look at how seventies we are yeah. and I'm sorry but unless I'm wrong and please tell me if I'm wrong. Like tweet us at Vundacast uh if you're old enough to blog. tweet if you're old enough to remember Yes, if you're old enough to tweet. But if you're also old enough to remember the 70s, was any soldier in Vietnam listening to David Bowie's Tweet us at the blog or at Was Vindicast? any one of them like, yeah, unless they were like really into glam rock. Look, like, I just really feel like there was a moment where I felt like I was like, no Joe Schmo soldier dude in the 70s was going to be listening to Ziggy Stardust. Yeah, right on. Maybe I'm guys. super wrong. Yeah. Maybe I'm being stereotypical yeah. or whatever. You know, I, I don't know. I just, it really didn't feel like it was, it felt out of place. Um, and yeah, but yeah, no, the movie had a little bit too much music, but it, it, it knew kind of when to, yeah. it was like, oh, enough now. We've done enough. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like the movie. And the best part of the movie, arguably, is the last. The end of the credits, when they basically set up like, "Hey guys, well, do you like monsters? Because you're gonna see some fucking monsters. We got giant turtles. <laughs> we got three-headed monsters. We, we got, got Mothra's. We got flame-throwing monsters. We got a flame-throwing fucking monster. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so they basically hinted basically at basically they're saying Tom Hiddleston, Mothra's we coming. can make a bunch of cool prequel exactly. movies with you fighting monsters. No, and they basically were like, Mothra's coming. Gidra's coming. Yeah. 
the turtle, whatever turtle, his name is. I can't remember. Rodan. 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 Rodan's know. coming. They basically were, And what was funny is the credits kind of gave it away because they were like, Mothra, uh, Rodan, Ghidra, properties of clack, clack, clack. Yeah. And we're like, we didn't see them in the movie. And then the fucking end, end credits. credits, the stinger popped up. And it was like, oh, shit! And it was arguably the most yeah. exciting part of the whole fucking movie. After we had just seen a giant monkey mm. fucking beating the shit out of stuff and being cool, the the best part of the movie was when they were like, you're gonna see some monsters! Like, what? Even <laughs> more crazy <laughs> monsters! Um, we didn't even talk about... John C. Riley John C. Riley's stole character. the goddamn movie. Stole the movie. And he, yes. he, he almost stole the credits. If it wasn't yes. for that credits thing, he would have yes. stole the credits. He stole the movie. John C. Riley was fan-fucking-tastic. Yeah. And... I want to see a prequel with him and Guyen, the 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 Japanese guy. I want to see them yeah, like in the sure. fucking woods. Them becoming best friends yeah. and then having tragedy. I want to see them fucking yeah. yeah. But I mean, unfortunately, yeah, we're gonna see him die. But Stephen had talked and told me that there was a possibility that that, that his relationship. So basically, the rumor that the internet is is saying. So is like that the whole point was that he John Cena's character dro- was dropped off on Skull Island during World War Two, and a Japanese soldier was also crash landed on there and they basically were about to kill the fuck out of each other until fucking King Kong was Shows like, up and they realize they have they bigger realize problems. We have way bigger problems on our hands than each other and whatever the fuck's going on over there, we're stuck over here, there's a giant monkey, oh my god. And so they end up having this great relationship and he unfortunately ends up getting killed by the indigenous people on the island um, I don't know why. Did he Did he ever explain why? Was it the, I, thought, I thought it was just something that happened that they never explained. No, like, I thought they said that he they killed him. He was sick? May, I don't know, maybe. I don't know. Whatever happened... Maybe there's, a zombie. there's maybe zombies. Maybe there's zombies. The maybe there's, there's zombies. There's zombies on the island now? That's the thing. The indigenous people on the island, they barely spoke, and they had cool face paint on. Yeah. And they were awesome. They were really cool, weird skull... Indigenous society. I liked, I liked, I liked their indigenous society because it didn't feel, I don't know, it didn't feel too like forced and, and, and like low and fluffy. Feel, I mean, yeah, exactly. It didn't feel like that. It felt, it felt natural. It also felt natural because the island is in the middle of the South Pacific, yeah. so they were like an Asian based. I, I think, an Asian I think because they weren't society. trying to be like evil. Like I felt like Peter Jackson much more played up like the like. But they weren't evil. Evil tribe were, main yeah. thing. Oh, you know definitely. What I mean? Like, where they're bad just for being, just yeah. to be bad. Like bloodless. But, like, these people yeah. were not bad. They're just sort of trying to survive on this crazy-ass mm-hmm. island, you know? Like, they, uh, out of anyone, they have mm-hmm. the most respect because it's, like, how have they lived so there for thousands of years? And they Danny thrived here. what was trying to say was that some people feel that perhaps the way that John C. Riley's American and then his Japanese pilot enemy start off as enemies and then become friends, that will be what Godzilla versus King Kong mirrors. And, like, King Kong being, like, an American monster, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Godzilla being a Japanese monster, and then them fighting, and then uniting for a greater For a greater good. good. Uh, possibly to fight Ghidra or Rodan or Mothra or something. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it, movie was good. It was really movie good. was good. Yeah. Great cast. Great effects. Overall, how many... Um, how many giant... How many is okay? Is your Skull Island fully surrounded by a hurricane? Is it a, is it a partially surrounded by a hurricane? Is it's, it a Cat Five hurricane surrounding your island? It's a cat. It's a Cat Four. <laughs> cat Four. Oh. Team, you're not gonna go the full five for anything. I don't know. I'm just so you're well. you're reserving that for the most special actually, of films. Actually, I guess say I guess I could go Cat Five. Calm was pretty. Fucking awesome! It's pretty Kong exhilarating, was a, right? A really effective movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a good time. Kong, yeah, five. Yeah, five. I wouldn't give a five. That's a little crazy. Oh fuck you! <laughs> trying to convince That's me to give it a five. Kill. You're trying to convince me. I to... would say it's a cat four, definitely cat four. I said that, so I'm not. Now I'm changing my answer back to my original answer. Cat four. Fuck you. Cause you know, for everything that it was, it wasn't a movie for everybody. No, definitely. You know, like. It was a boy movie. Yeah. It was a nerd movie. It wasn't like, you know, I couldn't take my grandma. Well, maybe my grandma. Yeah. But not most people's grandma. Um, so we are the Vundacast. <laughs> Official podcast of Vundapog.com. Are you taking a break, yeah? 
No, it's the end. I'm oh, like, who's wrapping it up? The skull crawlers killed Ikari Gunpei. There you go. That's who killed that's him. That's why. Because I, I thought he said the islanders killed him. Like, why would the indigenous people kill the guy for no reason? But no, it was the it was the, the skull monsters, crawlers. Yeah. It was the monsters. The two legged beasts, which were funnily designed. Yes. Which we talked about sort of in our private conversation about how they kind of reminded us of Samael from. Hellboy yeah. with like their exoskeleton yeah. heads and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So big ups to you guys for alluding to Hellboy. <laughs> um, um, I mean, it that's is late at night. That's not all we saw, but I guess we can. We reviewed two wrap movies. That's enough yeah. for this evening. You're tired. You're done. That's enough giant monsters you're for done. one night. I guess yeah, I'll giant monsters, and then we'll like. Yeah. yeah. So this has been the Vundercast. Yeah. This has been an episode now titled "Go Go Colonel Klutz." Um, you mighty tripping. I forget that we can talk so much shit, dude. I know, we can fill up podcasts like no one's business. We have no fucking I know. filter. We're the worst, I guess. No, we're the best. We're the best, I guess. yeah. I guessed. We're the best, I guessed. I guessed. And on that note, <laughs> that has been Danielle. Yes. Zena and Duke still asleep, curled into the ball. They said Duke looked up a couple times. Daddy. Yeah. And he was like, why the fuck are they talking? Why are they still up right now? These people are crazy. This is garbage. That does not deserve a cat five at all. Danielle's crazy. Yeah. That's what he thought. Duke knows. He knows what's really up. He knows. He's accurate. We keep talking about trying to sneak him into the movies because he's so cute. And tiny. Tiny. But he might bark at inappropriate times. It'll... I'm pretty sure he'd bark at Kong Skull Island. <laughs> when Tom Hiddleston... She was biceps and like, bark, 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 I'm so into this. Bark. <laughs> bark. Is that his gay bark? Yeah, that's his, like, <laughs> bark. And then he, like, takes off his pants, he's like, boar? Bark. I have been your host, Steven. That has been Danielle. You have been Danielle. Yes, I have. She's making thumbs up. <sighs> I'll be honest. Symbols to the podcast. You've killed me. The yawn has ended her. Yeah. Um... Remember, kids, if you are going to fight giant monsters, you need to learn how to suplex people. That is necessary. I have one. Remember, kids, if a man says he's a geologist and starts dropping bombs, that man is not a geologist. (laughs) That man's a bomb dropper. (laughs) Yo. Wundercast? Give it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name.